friends. Today, we're gonna be testing out the new Disney Genie app, and we're just gonna let the app do its thing. A regular day for me, my usual routine, nothing special. I didn't wake up and do rope drop or anything like that, and I just wanna see if it's gonna help me accomplish the things that I normally would wanna do in a park on a regular day. Anywho's, let's go do this. We're gonna start off our day here at Disney's Animal Kingdom. And just like any other day that I come to Animal Kingdom, I wanna ride Flight of Passage, I wanna ride Expedition Everest, and I wanna ride Dinosaur. And we're gonna see if the Genie app is gonna help us do that quicker or faster. And plus, I plan on park hopping a little bit later on. It is just about 12.30 in the afternoon, and this is what time I normally would be coming to the parks. And I'm gonna actually launch the Genie now in my Disney Experience app. I haven't even looked at it yet, so we're literally just gonna start off right now and see where the day takes us. There we go, we're just gonna start it up right now. We're gonna pick the attractions that we wanna do. So we wanna do Avatar, Flight of Passage, Dinosaur, and Expedition Everest. So all those, bada bing, bada boom. Um, I like villains. I like live entertainment. And continue. None of those. Entering full strength magic mode. That is really fancy. There we go, oh, okay. So we can purchase a flight of passage for $11. I'll do that, thank you. Don't mind if I do. Oh, wow, that's like in a couple minutes. Yes, please, holy moly. Well, this is actually really starting to be amazing. Continue, yes. Okay, and we're gonna get the Disney Genie Plus service. Yes, we will. Don't mind if I do. Done. $15 for the day. Now, I also want to buy, uh... oh wow, book an experience. Let's see. Ah, uh, yes, please. Perfect. I want to purchase a now I'm gonna purchase an Expedition Everest. Wow, you can do one at 115? Holy moly. Oh wow, so I can literally just go ride Expedition Everest right now. It is 111 and it's 115 and I'm gonna do it for $7? Yes, I will. Okay, so that was actually pretty easy, like to navigate through the app. I'm sorry I couldn't actually keep it all in there, but it had my address, my credit card information, so it's probably like skipping around a little bit. But for $33, I just booked Avatar Flight of Passage, Expedition Everest, and Dinosaur all within the next hour and a half and I'm gonna be able to use the lightning lane. I think that is kind of kind of really awesome. I really think it's amazing. Let me know in the comments what you think. $33, and I can ride Flight of Passage, Expedition Everest, and Dinosaur within two hours. Like, that is, all right, I don't know, I kind of like it, but I couldn't, I couldn't spend $33 every single day. Like, I can't, I don't know. We'll see how it goes, but on vacation, I think that is really cool and a great option. It's funny because we did all of that and we didn't even go in the park yet. I kind of did it just hanging out out front in uh, this area right here. So I purchased the Lightning Lane for the Flight of Passage, which is $11, and Expedition Everest, which is $7. So that's just $18 for a one-time purchase. The other $15 is because I bought Genie Plus for the day. So I'm also going to be able to use that to get Lightning Lanes at other attractions when I park hop, or if I plan on doing other ones here. And I don't know, like I said, for a vacation, I think I would spend $33 to accomplish what I'm about to do in the next hour uh, when I'm on vacation, not like every single day but $33 to actually knock out all the things that you would normally not be able to do I would do it so here is a look at my lineup Expedition Everest right now at 115 and then immediately afterwards we get to go ride dinosaur and then it recommended me to go get a coffee which I probably will actually go get a coffee and then we get to ride Avatar Flight of Passage at 245 and I'm not saying it's better than Fast Pass because nothing is going to be better than the Fast Pass system that we used to have. But this is the times we're living in and this is what we have. So we're going to make the best of it and uh, try to enjoy everything that we can. Oh, it looks like we're just in time for the macaws. Here they come. Oh, coming in hot.
one thing I think the Genie app is 100% wrong about is who rides two rides before they get a cup of coffee. Suggesting I go ride Expedition Everest and Dinosaur and then get coffee? You are so wrong, Genie. Seriously, I think we're just gonna actually grab some coffee right now and then go ride Expedition Everest. We got the pumpkin game changer again and we're gonna drink our coffee and then we're gonna go ride Expedition Everest. Cheers! Because we had Expedition Everest and Dinosaur both from 115 to 215, I kind of pushed it to the very end because I want to see how much we can get done in just about an hour. So we're going to immediately ride this, then Dinosaur, and then just in about 45 minutes, it's going to be time for Flight of Passage. And look at the standby line for Expedition Everest. I hope, I mean, I really hope that the Lightning Lane isn't that long. Also, if we end up missing our time for the lightning lane, it'll be interesting to see if they give you that 15 minute lean way. That's how it used to be with the fast pass. I mean, if you were a couple minutes late, they'd still let you on. So if we don't make it over to Dinosaur by 2.15, it'd be interesting to see if they actually still let us ride. So for a single person, is it worth $7 to skip this whole entire line and just go on into the lightning lane? So you have it on there. Look at that. Thank you. There is zero wait for the lightning lane. Not a single person. We're just walking right on. So our official ride time starts at 1.50. And like I said, we're going to see if we can get over to Flight of Passage by 2.45. That meaning we did Expedition Everest, Dinosaur, and Flight of Passage in one hour. And I was able to request front row. Oh no, there's been a tragedy on Expedition Everest. Somebody lost their I'm celebrating button down there. I hope they weren't celebrating something special. Goodbye. Maybe that's where we'll go next. Gotta hang on to the hats for this one. Oh boy. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> oh. to start a day. I love it. <laughs> Ooh, the other people are liking it too. Now it's time we head on over to Dinosaur and use our next lightning lane. Now this one, I paid the $15 to get Genie Plus so I can get multiple ones that are on that list. The only ones that you have to pay for like a la carte is uh, Expedition Everest and Flight of Passage. Right now, Flight of Passage is a 95 minute wait and Navi River is 45 minutes. So that is pretty intense. I'm glad that we have the lightning lane for that. I will tell you right now, if I had a family of five, 
I would pay $55 for the whole family to skip the line uh, 95 minutes for flight of passage. I don't even care if you have to skip the meal for the day. 95 minutes is insane. Or if you actually want to avoid not paying at all, show up for rope drop, get here super early and brush in. But like I said, me doing this as a day that I would normally do, I don't like to do rope drop that often. So that's why this kind of works out perfect for me and me being by myself. That is another thing. It is 2.07, so we are going to be able to make our lightning lane pass on time, but I'm still going to ask the cast member if there is a grace period. And like I said before, no way do I think Disney Genie is better than Fast Pass. The thing is, is Fast Pass does not exist anymore, and Disney Genie is what we have now. And I actually like Disney Genie better than nothing at all. And uh, it's still debatable, like I said, whether or not I can actually justify spending this much money on a daily basis. But if I'm on vacation, and that's what Disney is kind of looking to market themselves to, is people that are on vacation. And if I had the extra butts or I had to make like a cutback somewhere, I would definitely spend it on this. And now it's time for our lightning lane pass. And the standby line is 15 minutes. So we'll just bada bing, hi. Excellent, thank you. I don't think this is worth it to pay something like a la carte for, especially if it's only a 15 minute wait. Yeah, it doesn't seem like there's a wait at all. Hello there. Welcome to our little trans-dimensional joyride, folks. I'm Dr. Seeker, your friendly controller and a heck of a paleontologist, if I do say so myself. There is like absolutely no line at all to ride Dinosaur. Sometimes it can get busy though, and if you get caught on that day, then the Disney Genie Plus will definitely come in handy. Time travel commencing in T minus 10 seconds and counting. This is Seeker. Listen up. We've got to get in, grab the Iguanodon, and get out before that asteroid hits. Let's roll! amazing. Dinosaur is one of my all-time favorite rides and if I was on vacation it was my last day and I was in Animal Kingdom and that was a 95 minute wait and I wouldn't be able to ride it before I go I would pay $20 to skip the line and go right down the lightning line. I mean I would put that up there as Rise of Resistance and now it's not actually on that a la carte menu. I like how I'm calling it a la carte. Uh, it's included in the Genie Plus but for me personally, I think it's a $20 ride. Now let's check back with Genie and see if they have any other recommendations. It's time to head over to Flight of Passage. And just like I thought, we were able to do all three rides in under an hour. Like, and I'm not even rushing. I'm kind of just like walking around slowly. And it's telling me to check out Discovery Island Trails, uh, the Boneyard, but I think I want to park hop. So, oh, plan your next park. Tell Disney Genie where you would like to do next, okay. Let's see what this does. I want to go to Epcot. Yeah, I want to go to Epcot today. Let's see, pulling out all the stops. Ooh, I want to do Frozen. I want to do Remy's Ratatouille. I want to do Soarin'. I want to do Test Track. We'll do all those things. Creating your best Disney day. So it looks like we can actually grab uh, Lightning Lane for Soren. Oh wow, at 240. Holy moly. So that means we can get off Flight of Passage and then literally drive over to Epcot and be able to ride Soren right afterwards. I'll take that. Thank you. Look at that. Oh wow. So now we're going to be able to go ride Flight of Passage and then we're going to hop right on over to Epcot immediately afterwards and not wait in line to ride Soren. And I'm going to see if there's other options that I could purchase. Maybe I should see if I can buy a Ratatouille Pass. I mean, that would be interesting, but I've already spent $33, so it's not like I want to spend $50 for the whole entire day. I mean, honestly, for one person, it's not that bad, but for a family, they really, they, like, uh, some families can't afford that. So let's see if we can buy a Lightning Lane for Remy's Ratatouille. I don't know if they're available. Maybe they're all sold out for the day. Let's, wait a second. What's this? I'm not eligible. 
It says the guest has reached the maximum number of Lightning Lane selections allowed uh, for an individual purchase today. So you can only buy two Lightning Lane passes per day. Wow, I didn't know that. See, I had no idea that was even a thing. I didn't know that you're only limited to two. I didn't do much research into this. I kind of just wanted to go into it blindly so that I can experience how the app works just for anyone else that actually just picks it up and decides to do it. And uh, yeah, you learn as you go. And now it's time for Flight of Passage. And then we're gonna head to Epcot and we have a Lightning Lane already for Soren once we get there. Wait time now is 70 minutes. And we're gonna scan and go now. Bada bing, bada boom. Now we can officially say we've done Expedition Everest, Dinosaur, and Flight of Passage, and did it in 50 minutes, and we spent $33 to do so. So, like I said, I'll leave it into your hands to let me know in the comments whether you think it's worth it or not. Uh, you know what I mean? Let me know. Like I, like I said, it's hard for me to say or speak for families because it's just me on my own. And I can tell you, me on my own would not do this all the time. I would do it maybe once a day on vacation. Um, but like, I don't know. Like I said, I would really need to want to get these rides done. And there was no line for the lightning lane. One. Bada boom. Thanks. How many? Five. Okay, have you $11, definitely worth it. Definitely, definitely worth it. Sanitize. Thank you. That's right. Please fill all the systems ready. Okay, sealed genetic matching room. Okay, Dr. Stevens, they're ready. We're missing number seven. Can everyone see me? Number seven. <laughs> You've all got them. Oh. <laughs> I took my hat off for this because I like to feel the air on my head. Once you get off Flight of Passage, you'll see these three handprints with initials next to them. Let me know in the comments if you know what those initials are. They're all three different people. JC, JR, and JL. This is some new stuff right here. <laughs> it's a new interaction at Flight of Passage. <laughs> That was awesome just to walk right on Flight of Passage. And I did ask one of the coordinators if there was a window or a time frame in case you miss your lightning lane. And he told me it's best to just make sure you're within your time window. And if you are late, it's on the cast member's discretion if they let you in or not. There's no set like, you know, allowance. Like there's no like grace period. And it just depends on how the day is going, what the current wait time is. and. A little Disney magic, maybe. 
Now it's time I think we actually park hop and head on over to Epcot to ride Soren. And I don't know if you want to start the clock like when I initially started riding rides, which was 1.50, but now it is actually uh, three o'clock. So an hour and 10 minutes, we knocked out all three rides and we're gonna go to Epcot to ride Soren. I really wish Disney Genie Plus could help me with a tram to get to my car so I can get over to Epcot because it is hot out today and Animal Kingdom has one of the longest parking lots. And we have successfully made it to Epcot. Oh, here comes Monorail Silver leaving Epcot. Well, that was kind of beautiful with the sun, wasn't it? Even though we did make great time, it looks like we might be late for our soar and lightning lane. And it's so strange because I want to say uh, fast pass or, you know what I mean? Like I, I want to say it, but it's lightning lane. And uh, like I said, it's going to be on the cast member's discretion if we're allowed to ride or not. My friend, how are you? <laughs> oh, awesome. Like I said, we did make good timing, but the time spent actually getting through the parking lots into the car actually took up a lot of it. We do need trams back. Oh, here comes a bunch of soaring pilots right now. Maybe they'll let me know. Have you ever been at an airport and you got super excited when you seen the pilot walking around? That's exactly how I felt when I just saw the soaring cast members walking by Spaceship Earth. How funny is that? We are now officially five minutes late for our return time. So hopefully they're gonna let us on. We need a little Disney magic. There's my friend Mike down there. He's waiting for me because we're gonna ride together. And look at him. He's just scoping out, probably texting me like, hey, where you at? I'm underneath the Soren sign. Yeah, I'm just sitting here waiting for you. Oh, he is texting. All right, let's see. I'll go on this side. I'm late. Oh, it let me in. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah, one more time at the top. Okay. Thank you. It let me in even though I am late. So my official tardiness is 14 minutes. 14 minutes and I still lit up green. So there might be an actual like uh, allowance of time. I mean, who knows? I, I don't know if there's actually something uh, scripted or there's rules, but hey, 14 minutes is good. And of course we got to do B1, my favorite. Another cool thing to point out is now I'm riding Flight of Passage and Soren within one hour. Like, back to back. It's kind of cool, because they're like the same type of ride. Soren to oh, tower. Yeah. We are ready for takeoff.
now that we got done riding Soren, I think it'd be fun to actually see what the genie recommends that we do now that we're in the park. Now, I haven't gone off many of the recommendations so far. Like it told me to go ride two rides and then the best time to get coffee was after those two rides. And of course, that didn't make a lick of sense. But, you know, I, I mean, I'm interested to see what they uh, have in mind here at Epcot. I did maybe have to put in a different preference to say I want to maybe drink some drinks or eat some food. But uh, yeah, we'll see. So it's telling me that I can book another Lightning Lane entry. I can go see Sergio over in Italy, Voices of Liberty at 515. And also, it's a good time to actually get something to eat at Regal Eagle between 545 and 615. And yeah, I don't know. None of those are actually really lining up to what I want to do at the moment. Test Track has a super low wait time during Harmonious though, so that's always good. It is a little weird that you can only do two Lightning Lane like separate purchases. So since we already purchased Flight of Passage and Expedition Everest, we can't do any here at Epcot. If it was so and you could, I could literally pay $9 and go ride Frozen Ever After right now at this moment. The same thing with Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. I could literally just pay $9 and go ride. The next available times for those are $4.35 and it won't let me like I said it's two so I wonder if you can uh, park hop if you do one in one park and then one in the other if that will still allow you to do it it only says two per day so it doesn't say two per park so I don't know maybe that'll be another future video I wish Disney Genie would help me find a place to go grab a beer but I kind of don't need Disney Genie's help to find the good beer spots hey friend how are you I want to actually go get a pumpkin spice latte beer <laughs> Since there's not any pumpkin spice latte beers available, I decided to get the Lightning Lager, which is kind of fitting today since we're doing the Lightning Lane. And I had this beer before and I liked it a lot. It would have been cool if they actually put in something that allows you to find like beer or mixed drinks, but it doesn't have it as a park interest. They have the different characters like princesses and villains, and then park interest, they have parades, live entertainment, park classics, slow rides, water rides, thrill rides, and then for dining, they just have casual character, dining, and signature. Where's the beer? Where's the drinking around the world? So we're just gonna lightning lager it up and uh, enjoy a little time here at Epcot. So cheers. I came back out front and I noticed Mickey and Minnie are actually meeting guests as they come in. And it made me think, do you think eventually uh, the Genie app is gonna let people know when there's characters out and about? You know what I mean? I noticed before they did the performances like Sergio, but like what about all these character sightings? Because before the shutdown, a big part of people's vacations was coming and actually meeting characters. So hopefully they'll actually carry that over and give people the opportunity to actually go see characters. And I guess with that, we are gonna call it a day here. Honestly, I really had fun with my day and actually going around using the Genie app. Um, it's $33 is what I ended up paying for for the day. I would have paid more if they gave me the option to actually do it. But I don't think this is feasible for families on a budget or just anyone to come to the parks. I mean, I have to think in mind, and, it, and this is very important, we have to remember that fast passes are not coming back. Do you know what I mean? They're not coming back. So like, I'm all for the Genie app when it comes to actually doing the individual Lightning Lane purchases. I think that's a great idea. Not the biggest fan of the Genie Plus app. Um, I don't think it's really worth the value because most of the rides that are on there, the wait times aren't that bad and you can actually get away with it uh, without paying the $15. And when we say $15, we're talking about per person. So as a family, that can really add up. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Like I said, everything changes between me and a family because I'm a single person. A family has a lot of big numbers to actually worry about. And honestly, I, in the future, I might use it. Maybe I won't use it. It was beneficial to actually accomplish the things that I wanted to do today, but it was beneficial at a price. I had to pay for it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. I think that was my longest outro ever. And we'll see you next time. Bye.